Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for good news. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for your promises. Your promise of a new heaven and earth where righteousness is at home. We thank you for the gift of faith so we can go out into a new life leaving behind all that is not living up to your word. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Please be seated. In a normal advent, in a normal year, heading towards a normal Christmas, I could easily speculate and wonder and ask the question, why did all these people from the Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem go out to the wilderness to be with John the Baptist? Why? What would possess them to leave the comforts of home, to go out to the wilderness, to a man wearing camel's hair and eating locusts and honey? What possessed them? Now, in this abnormal year, I think it makes complete sense because who doesn't want to get out of their house? I think I would choose any wilderness right now opposed to being stuck in my house where indeed one day feels like a thousand years. We would like to get away and in fact the parks are showing that more and more people are going to wilderness areas to get away. It's safe. There's no one there. That's the joy of a wilderness. That's not quite the wilderness I'm concerned with this morning. I'm concerned about the wilderness that we might find in our heart, the wilderness we sometimes find in our home, the wilderness that we certainly find when we just take one step outside of our door. One of the great perils and frustrations of our time is due to our political and social dysfunction, we have turned our nation into a wilderness. We have so mishandled this pandemic, and this pandemic has so revealed the troubling side of our commitments to one another that we are in a wilderness moment together. And in this wilderness, it feels unsafe. It feels dangerous, threatening, worrisome. We feel frustrated. We feel overwhelmed. We are often in actual danger, and we feel powerless to protect those we love. We feel exposed, isolated, alone. There are so many ways to experience this moment in time as a spiritual wilderness. And yet, here is the good news. We learn in this gospel that the wilderness is a promising place. The wilderness is a promising place. A place where God is to meet us with a new beginning, with a new start, a freshness of life. We learn from Second Peter that this dissolution of the world we know, this dissolving of the world as it is, is when God discloses the world as it should be. We learn that when the world is rended apart, this is a time when God reveals God's self. 
we learn that when things are burning up, that this fire is a refining fire that's purifying us and leading us to a new heaven and earth where righteousness has a home. When it dissolves, we look for what God discloses. When it is rent apart, we look for what God reveals. When it is burning up, we look for what God is refining. We are blessed with this gift of good news in the wilderness that we are surely experiencing. So, why, why did the residents of Jerusalem, all of them it says, and the people of the countryside of Judea, why did they leave the comforts of home, of normal everyday life and relationships? Why did they uproot themselves and go to the wilderness? Well, I will say this. They were a people under tremendous stress. They were an occupied people, occupied by the Romans, both at the time of John the Baptist and at the time the gospel was written. They were occupied and oppressed, overwhelmed and stressed. They were divided against each other in factions and fragments and parties full of antagonism and anger and frustration with their own powerlessness. And they were burdened by moral guilt. They knew in the teachings of the Torah that their present circumstances reflected their moral failings. They knew the Torah, the law, and the prophets. And they knew according to the law and the prophets that when they went after false gods or chased after idols or found security in things less than God, that that would lead them astray. And so they saw their calamity as a reflection on an injured relationship with God. And so they carried the burden of guilt on top of every other burden. And so they went out. And so they went to the wilderness looking for a new beginning with God looking for a refreshed relationship with God, a new start. And that new start began with an ending. They had to turn away from what they considered a normal life to discover the blessed life that God had in store. They had to diagnose and see that the normal status quo life was not the life that God desired. It was not the new heaven and earth. It, there was no home for righteousness in that life. And they had to be hungry for that vision, that promise to go out to the wilderness to listen and renew themselves in God. This Jordan River is the place where Israel became Israel, where they entered the promised land, where they were constituted as a people. And baptism was a way of starting all over again. I will go back through that river and re-engage my relationship with God. My friends, Scripture leads us well, and we need to be grateful for the gift it gives us of the promise of finding God in the wilderness, of finding God's promises revealed when all is torn away. And we follow scripture. We who live in a dysfunctional polity, a dysfunctional society that is literally killing us. The toll of this pandemic is tripled and quadrupled because 
of our dysfunctional ways of living together in this nation. The pandemic has revealed our callousness, our selfishness, our inability to work together for the common good. And we know that famines and pandemics, no matter where in the world they occur, and we never expected this in America, are always made worse because of political and social dysfunction. We are living through that moment, and our first move is to diagnose it and understand that there is something better, a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness is at home, right relationship is at home, because it's not at home with us right now. So let's follow the pattern of Scripture. What does Scripture say? It says, begin with trust in the promises. Trust God's promise to bring a new heaven and earth where right relationship prevails. Trust that promise and follow it out from the normal. The normal that is lacking to what God is promising. And we know that once we make that move of trusting the promises and departing from the normal, we are already engaged in everything else Scripture recommends. We are already in the process of repentance and confession. Repentance began when the Judeans left home because they were turning their lives towards God and that's what repentance is. Whenever we depart from the broad path into the narrow path focused on God, we are repenting. And they were confessing because they were admitting the inadequacy of the way they'd been living. They were admitting that they were overwhelmed by their guilt, overwhelmed by their stress, lost and afraid, unable to find their way. They were confessing as they went. So we trust the promises. We repent by departing. We confess by opening an honest assessment of where we are. And in the wilderness, we find right relationship with God in the Messiah who is coming. It's the Messiah who is coming, Jesus Christ, who is the new creation, who is the new heaven and earth, who is the one who sets right all relationships and open because of the promises, open because of our repentance, open because of our confession, we may receive the ultimate gift of life restored in the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who is coming into the world. Brothers and sisters, good things are on the way. Let us rejoice even as we depart. Amen.